of chemotherapy once every eight, 10 days. And she's so ill. I've never seen her like this, and she's losing her ability to speak. Well, my guess is that, uh, where is she physically? She's physically in Glendale, California, and she goes to USC for these treatments. Yeah. If, if they realized that there was another avenue to help what they were doing, and my guess is that they're probably using a more of a pinpoint type of, uh, of radiation than... than, than uh, than a massive uh, form of radiation. That's just my guess, because they're pretty sophisticated in what they do. But uh, you know, she could call. Uh, she could call someone like uh, Oasis of Hope, which uh, we work with a lot, and they use hyperbarics. Oasis of Hope uh, cancer program uses hyperbarics for uh, this particular purpose. I'll have her do that. Yeah, oh, she definitely. could call. Uh, I, I she could call my number. And call me and get it. I I can give her the number. I don't have it with me right now. I'd give it to you. Thank you. So the FDA has really approved this and has supported hyperbaric treatments. Is that because of the way you've stewarded and David Hughes and Richard Newbauer have stewarded this treatment? Actually, it's a result of the fact that it indisputably works with things that have been used over the years before we got so crazy with regulation. And also what we've done, we've done an awful lot to promote research and to help people do the things that they need to do to learn. Um, And I don't know how much it's affected the FDA doing anything, but it certainly affected a lot of doctors who, who support what the FDA is trying to do to expand the knowledge and acceptance of hyperbarics. What's your greatest challenge today, if any? Well, there's always great challenges. Uh, My personal challenge is to reduce the cost of hyperbaric therapy to the point where it can be utilized by people who have no way of doing it right now. And I believe that if we created a uh, nonprofit institution and we could get some donations for the capital equipment so we didn't have any payments, I believe we could bring hyperbarics down to about $75 a treatment. I think that would be totally worth it, and I would support getting that started with you and for you and for the people who need it. I think that that would be absolutely incredible. It would change people's lives, and it would be the next step of changing the face of medicine. Um, in our uh, in our country, because we're we're too money driven. I think we're spending two and a half trillion dollars now on on medical causes in the United States. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of suffering too, and it's a lot of experimentation. Absolutely, yeah. So that's my that would be my dream. Um, I'd love to do that. I've not found too many people who have had that. Uh, that desire to get involved in it, though it's not it's not easy. You know, a lot of people would get involved in anything if there's a lot of money to be made. But if there's a lot of money to be made, then somebody's paying that money, and it's the patients. And in this case, you know, we're we're stealing people's lives away by not allowing them treatment. I've had a very pr- pretty aggressive charity program for years that I've done, and temporarily I had to suspend it because of the economy. We haven't had the means to continue doing it, but we treated a lot of people over the last 12 years. We saved a lot of lives. We saved a lot of arms and legs and hands. It's quite amazing, and I thank God for that every day. I mean, I just, the fact that we could do that was a gift. This is really needed. I'm so excited that you have a dream to make this available and affordable, and I think it is going to take some type of a nonprofit to do it. Well, if we can take the profit motive out of it and we can we can uh, get the equipment somehow, we can get raise money to get the equipment, we eliminate a big payment because for, uh, for f- say, for example, a UCLA, UCLA probably has a couple million dollars invested in their chamber. That's huge money to pay every month on the loan or the lease or however they're doing it, along with interest and everything. And just to have a small clinic with four or five chambers in it would probably cost six or seven hundred thousand dollars, if not more. 
and the payments on that would be phenomenal. If you can eliminate those two things, you can bring the cost down substantially. I wonder if you see in the future the ability for these hyperbaric chambers to become more economy of scale type investments, or do you think it's going to stay so expensive? Well, I think it's going to be expensive because the equipment itself is highly sophisticated. Um, it would be cool for you to come down and visit. And I will come around. down. Um, it's really sophisticated equipment, and for safety it has to be. And I, and I totally understand that. I don't have a problem with it. But something I do have a problem with, if, if I'm to buy a chamber here, I can go get a chamber uh, and pay, say, $150,000 for it without, with, without hesitation, 150000 plus another 30000 for backup, you know, a, a room with compressors and air cleaners and air dryers and blowers and gas testers and oxygen supply and all that. I might have $200,000 a chamber invested. That's a lot of money. Right. I can go to China or Russia, and I can buy a chamber built to the exact same specifications and in some cases better specifications for thirty to $35,000. Can you bring them here? Theoretically, no. It's very interesting. I've known some people who ship them to Canada and bring them over on a truck, but I don't think that's kosher. I, I tried years ago to to do it, and uh, you know, was, I was told no, and I don't want to be involved in any kind of shenanigans. You know, I understand. <laughs> I understand. Well, it's a real pleasure and an honor to talk with you. I love what you're doing. I am going to come and see you in Newport Beach and see your facility and sit and talk with you about what's next. Well, that would be great. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been talking with, learning from, and listening to Dr. Donald Jolly, the director of the Hyperbaric Oxygen Treatment part of the Center for New Medicine, Hyperbaric Institute. He can be reached at 949-436-4960. You can go to www.hyperbaricanswers.com to read more about his work. And it is a pleasure and an honor to talk with you. And I look forward to meeting you soon. Thank you so much. My pleasure.